In this video I will show how I have connected the uh, Pokey 57 CNC controller to the stepper drivers and further to the stepper motors and then adding uh, at least a limit switch and e-stop and then do some of the basic setup in uh, Mark III uh, to see how it all works. What I have been doing up and until now is I have uh, connected three step motors to the three Pokey Step 60 drivers and those drivers are then connected to the Pokey 57 CNC board. The uh, step motors are connected with the two coils to the uh, step driver here and I have power in and the power is looping between the three step drivers and out to the power supply. Then the step drivers are connected with a flat cable to the controller uh, and I have connected them to controller output 1, 2 and 3. The next uh, I'll be doing is uh, connecting a e-stop and it is described in the manual how to do it but uh, I, I had to use a little time to find it so I'll just point it out a little more uh, clearly here. I have now zoomed in on the e-stop connector. You can have two e-stop switches on uh, this board. One in the pendant and the other one is here. And you need to decide how many of these you want and which one you want to use. You can have either zero e-stop, you can have one here or here, or you can have one here and here. So zero, one or two. If you have zero, you essentially need to add a second jumper here. If you want to have only uh, the pendant, you will keep this jumper that shortcuts pin 2 and 3 on this connector and then you will add the, uh, the cable for the pendant and then this 4 and 6 pins will then be connected to the e-stop in the pendant. If you want to use this one only and not this one, you will take this jumper from here and put it between pin 4 and 6 here. And then you will connect this pin 2 and 3 to your e-stop uh, switch. And in the event that you want to use both, you add the connector to the pendant here. You take this one out and you connect to between pin 2 and 3 your second e-stop. So in order to connect an e-stop, you have to have the e-stop and you need to have the little connector and then you will be using a cable here, I have some 10 pin cable I will simply just pull off 4 pins of the cable starting with the red and then 3 more and then connect pin 2 and 3 here and down to pin 2 and 3 on the uh, connector so to make the uh, little e-stop connector you need of course the connector and then I have pulled off a piece of the flat cable so now I have four pins in the in the flat cable you have to turn it such that this pin comes together with the red here so like this so we have red here and you have the thing over here and then it's a matter of getting it squeezed together and I will try to do that in this yeah, it came out not so good it's open in one side and closed in the other so I think I'll just try, try with a pair of pliers here to squeeze it closed so just for safety I will just check that the uh, connections are ok. Yeah. Yeah. So that worked out fine. So then the e-stop needs to be connected between wire number 2 and 3. Yeah, so now I have connected in such a manner that uh, there is a connection uh, normally closed between two and three. So here's my finished uh, test setup uh, with the three motors that are connected to the uh, stepper drivers that are then connected to the uh, Pokey 57 CNC controller board and I have added the e-stop 
over here connected to this one and I have put in a jumper between the pins here in order to bypass this one I will not be using the pendant here in the beginning and then on the other side here I have added a limit switch just on one axis and then uh, I have also made an attempt for a probe over here so my zero finding tool and, and then a bit as a simulation of the probe and uh, the power comes from a 36 volt uh, PSU and that will be fed uh, here and looped through the three stepper drivers and then over to a step down that will make the 36 volt into 16 that is then connected to uh, the uh, stepper controller and in order for the stepper controller to take it I have moved the jumper down one uh, so it was up here sitting on the first and the second pin now it's on the two ladder points uh, so it's, if it's up here it's, it sources from USB and now it's on external so it will not draw the power out of the USB so in essence I should be ready to open the software and start to configuring the controller here uh, with the Mark III so when opening up Mark III, I get these different options for uh, different motion controllers. And since I have already installed the Pokey's uh, plug-in, I have the option to select it here and then click OK. So, uh, and this requires that uh, the connection via USB is open and the Pokey card is powered up with either USB power or external power and right now it's uh, on external power so now we have the connection to it but just to recap uh, how I did that I um, essentially used uh, one of the programs you can download from uh, the home page this Pokey 4219 I used that one configuration program and uh, if we open up the installer you can see what's being installed uh, during this so you get an application um, for uh, for it and you also get the communication protocol so you can go in and do different changes and then you get the the uh, the plug-in and it's actually put directly into the mark 3 plug-in uh, directory and you get the USB driver so by starting out with this one you get essentially all of the stuff on your computer you need and um, then you should be good to go so I say cancel here because we already done it then when you have uh, made the installation as I said the uh, plug-in will be placed in the Mark 3 and you will also get a new menu item among the programs here on the P for Pokies you get this new one and you can open the Pokies program here and it will search the USB and other places on the network to see if there's one and it has found this one uh, which is our uh, motion controller and we can connect to it and it will go out and read all the inputs and outputs and see what's there um, and I think the one I want to point out here is essentially this one the pulse engine in the pulse engine tab you can see a lot of the information that is saved on the uh, Pokies uh, motion controller for example that we have a limit switch sitting there uh, on the X and if you go to Y it has nothing and so on so there's a lot of information here most of which I have actually set uh, into uh, the plug-in so and then the plug-in will copy it on board to the Pokies so let's return back to uh, Mark 3 now back in Mark 3 we will hit the reset and essentially now the, the communication should be uh, going between the Mark 3 and the, uh, the motion controller. But in order for that to happen I have had to do some setup first. And of course the first thing when you have a new plugin you have to configure your plugin and you have to enable it. That's the first step. And then after enabling it you have to configure it and you can hit the configure and you can say which one it is and you can say configure and then you get into elaborate uh, menu here where you can do a lot of different things Ma the majority of things I've done if not all it's in the pulse engine where I have enabled the X uh, limit switch because I just want one for this experiment 
I have made a pin 19 connection for the probe and then I have made active low on all three axes. I actually started out doing it the wrong way where this was not ticked off and then it worked directly opposite so whenever a reset was flashing uh, I could feel that there was uh, power on the steppers and as soon as I hit reset and uh, then the power was gone. So by enabling here it is reversed and of course you want to have power on the steppers when uh, the reset button is not flashing. This may of course be different if you use another stepper driver. So when I use the post step 60 stepper driver, this is how it should be. If you use another stepper driver, this might be different, but you can always check it if uh, the reset button is doing something opposite, then you should do it opposite. On, the, on another tab, I've also done something on the uh, mapping here, down f further down here on the outputs. I have been mapping uh, the relay 1 and 2 to, to be used for the, um, for the spindle in this case and in the other uh, case for flood. So those two relays could now be used for those two purposes and then uh, we, we need to go back and do the rest of the configuration of Mac 3. And it's fairly simple. Uh, essentially you need to set up your ports and pins as usual. But the only thing you need to do is enable the access that you have. The rest of this here doesn't really matter. It's not used by Pokies. On the input signal, I have enabled the X uh, limit switch. Uh, and a little further down, you can see that I have enabled the probe and the e-stop. And on the output signal, I have enabled output 1 and 2. And they will be used for the flood and the spindle. And uh, they are... Over here you have an option to disable, but I have enabled them and uh, this should then secure that we will get the uh, connection going between the two things. And that's essentially all I have been setting up here in Mark III, um, except for doing a little motor tuning, but the numbers I've put in here are somewhat arbitrary, just make uh, the steppers move. So it's not kind of adjusted to a machine or anything, it's just some numbers that made the machine move. So let's reset and then see how things work. So let's start uh, by just trying to uh, turn the motors using the uh, arrow uh, keys on the, uh, uh, on the keyboard. And page up and down. Yeah, so all three uh, axes are moving as they should. Uh, and in the same time on the display in Mark III, we can see that the um, position on X, Y, and C are moving around as they should. So that's all very good. Uh, let's try uh, to see how the micro switch and the e-stop uh, will influence. So now I'll try to hit the e-stop. And I guess it's obvious that that actually worked. And I will hit reset here. And, and similarly we can try the uh, the limit switch is doing the same. And hitting reset again. And I can go to the diagnostics uh, page uh, where I have a, a, a button for spindle, throttle, uh, and we can try to click that. And we can hear the relay. And the second relay. It's also working. And uh, then what's left uh, is the um, is the um, is the pro and uh, it should uh, be able to activate the, this uh, LED here. So let's see if I go and just try it. And we simulate here, we can do it. We'll see. And yes it actually activates the um, the LED. Yeah, so this is the way to put it together. Three steppers, three post step, and motion controller, e-stop, a limit switch, probe. So everything you need is here for a simple setup for a simple CNC. 
Before wrapping up the video, I'll just show you the diagram. Here's the power supply, 36 volts, feeding power to the post step 60, and also into a step down, moving the voltage down to 12, that are then connected to the Pokey 57 CNC. Before the video, I have connected the post step via USB to the computer and adjusted the amperage to fit the stepper motors uh, that are then connected over here. I only showed for the X. <coughs> Each of the post steps, they are connected via the 10-pin flat cable to motor 1, 2, and 3. Then we have the e-stop connected to the little e-stop connector here. And we have a jumper sitting on the pendant in order to bypass the pendant e-stop. The connection, uh, the power connection is set to external by this jumper here. And then the last pieces are the uh, limit switch that I connected to ground and to the first one uh, here. And the next and the third one will then be connected to these. And if you had even more access, you just continue all the way up. And then the last pins here up here is the uh, probe. And the second one here is the ground connected to the probe, to the probe uh, also.